they seem to think that Donald Trump absolutely knew that Michael Cohen was taking care of the Stormy Daniels situation all along and was going to pay him for that, this, that, and the other. It's something that Michael Cohen's own former attorney, this is weird, he's testifying against him on Capitol Hill, Bob Costello, he's actually saying was not the case, that Michael's lied and that this whole phone call that allegedly they're trying to pin everything on this one phone call, I'm going to show you an excerpt of it, um, or actually an excerpt from a tape of a meeting, this one phone call is the reason why it, apparently Trump promised Michael that he would pay him back for stuff. Let's listen in to Bob Costello saying why that's all wrong. There, through further cross-examination, Cohen told me that he knew there was money missing from the Trump inauguration. Yes. I see where you are now. Thank okay. you. And then on the next page, um, end of that first paragraph, Cohen decided that while he didn't believe the allegation of the Stormy Daniels story, um, that he thought the story would be embarrassing for Trump and especially for Melania, so he decided he would take care of it himself. Absolutely. And that is contrary to what this guy testified to in court in New York yesterday. Well, and what's not being talked about is your next paragraph, like the reason and his motivation for that. So if you could just kind of walk through that for the committee. Yeah, I, obviously, uh, when we started to talk about the NDAs, and this is the very first meeting at the Regency Hotel, when, by the way, Rudy Giuliani was not involved in representing Donald Trump at that time. Cohn testified that it was a conspiracy between Giuliani and Costello as of this date. Totally false. In any event, he also said that he didn't discuss the Storm Stormy Daniels matter with us, and he certainly did. I specifically asked him, because he kept on going back saying, I can't believe they're trying to put me in jail for these NDAs. So I said, Michael, tell me about the NDA. Tell me about Stormy Daniels. What did you do? He said, I got a call from from a lawyer representing Stormy Daniels who represented that she was going to testify that Donald Trump had sex with Stormy Daniels. Michael Cohn said, I didn't believe the allegation, but I knew that such an allegation would be terribly embarrassing. He said, it would be embarrassing. He focused on Melania Trump. He said, I didn't want to embarrass Melania Trump. He said, that's why I decided to take care of this on my own. Right. I went back to that several times. You did this on your own? On my own. Did Donald Trump have anything to do with it? No. Did you get the money from Donald Trump? No. From any of his organizations? No. From anybody connected to Donald Trump? No. Where did you get the money? I took out a HELOC loan against my property. I said, why would you do that? He said, I didn't want anybody to know where I got this money. I didn't want Melania to know. I didn't want my own wife to know because she's in charge, he said, of the Cohen family finances. He said, if she saw money coming out of my account, she'd ask me a hundred questions and I didn't want to answer any of them. It was clear after talking to him for several days after that, whenever we talked on the phone or in my office, that he kept on bringing up the subject that he felt he was betrayed by not being brought down to Washington, D.C. This guy thought, he said to me, that he should have been Attorney General of the United States or at least the Chief Assistant to the President. Ludicrous, but that's what he thought. And he was very angry about that. He wanted to do something to put himself back into the inner circle of Donald Trump. That's why he took care of this on his own. There had to be a motivation. Michael Cohn is always working for things that benefit himself. And that's what he was doing here. That's wow. Okay, so different. quite an indictment from his former lawyer. Now, let me follow that up with this excerpt from a, a, a taped conversation. And, well, you know, you tell me what you think. I'm looking at your comments here in, in real time. Mike, good to see you back here. I got... I get two of my favorite mics, Mike O'Donnell and Mike Costa, some of our team members. By the way, you can subscribe and become a team member here. Don Baca here as well, encouraging you all to like, to subscribe, to hit the bell so you know when I'm here. But let's go and listen to this tape because I think this is pretty critical in light of things to hear sort of the naivete, if you would, in Donald Trump's voice. He's like, what are you people talking about? Listen. Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen. What financing? We'll have to pay you. So I'll pay okay. no, 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 no. I got. <laughs> okay, he's like, what financing? What financing? Look, 
I, I don't know how this is all going to shake out. It's entirely possible. We've all talked about this, right? you got a jury in New York City that really doesn't maybe like him because nobody likes him in New York City, let's be honest. And so it's very hard to find a really, really fair jury pool. It's entirely possible that they just want to put the screws to him. I hope not. I hope that they're actually honest members of society that are looking at, as even Ken Anderson Cooper did, right, and say to themselves, gee, can I convict here? Or do I have any any doubts at all? And if you have any doubts at all, then you're really not going to be able to move forward with the conviction. I think this was a mistake to bring this case. It's astonishing that it has resorted to all this. I mean, when you, you talk about the circus being in town, ladies and gentlemen, it's here and it's, it's, it's on for its encore at this moment. Totally an encore.